Hey, what's going on guys? Today I am very, very excited to talk about this knife right here. Um, it's going to be a very interesting review because this is the first time that I'm reviewing a knife that I designed. And uh, it might seem like, yeah, of course I love it, I designed it. Well, you can draw stuff out and think about different things, but until you get one in your hand and actually start using it, you just don't know what it's going to be like. I am pleased to say I am very, very happy with this, but just because I designed it does not make it the best knife in the world and I still have critiques on it. Um, but I'm extremely happy to announce that I have my own knife out there, a Cutlery Lover branded knife. Um, I'm going to explain the company that I work with, Bastion Gear, located out in uh, Georgia. Um, why them? Because that's going to be the first question. Why them? Why not Spyderco or Benchmade or SOG or CRKT or the, the numerous other awesome companies that are out there? Well, I've actually had different... Um, different people from major companies. I'm not going to mention which one specifically, uh, but I've had offers before for collaboration. But this is the first time that I've had an offer where I really had full say of a lot of things. Okay, not only like blade steel choices, but price points. Uh, Bastion Gear really, really worked with me to make sure that I was going to be happy with putting my name on something. Not only did they let me, you know, use my design fully and they worked back and forth with me, but this has been going on for months now. Um, but they were just really, really good in allowing it to be my knife. You know what I mean? Other companies, they, I had limitations that I wasn't super comfortable with. And one of the biggest things, one of the most important aspects of me releasing one of my designs into like a production knife was to allow two different price points for two different blade steels on the exact same knife. A lot of times companies might have like a cheaper version or a more expensive version, but sometimes you get different materials. Um, sometimes the designs are even slightly different. This is literally the exact same knife. Okay, this is the more affordable version or cheaper version. And this one is the expensive one. And if we compare them, they're identical. It's the same knife. All right, the only difference is the blade steel. So we're gonna go over all that stuff. This is how they do arrive, regardless of which one you get. It's a little foam, you know, fitted presentation box. A little piece of foam on top, just to keep it from wiggling around, and a little magnetic strip on the front. And it's just a cardboard box. Simple. Um, so, first let's talk about the design. I designed this knife over 15 years ago. Um, I don't talk about it much, but I have a lot of different personal knife designs and knife features that I like that I've come up with. And over the years, I've seen some of those things come to life. Because when it comes to knives, there's not all that much things that are new. So my concept over 15 years ago was to have a fusion of classic and new age. Okay, I love the idea of taking like a common, you know, slip joint pattern and modernizing it. But it's been done. <laughs> and, you know, it's cool to see it. But over the years, I was thinking like, man, that's my idea. But you know what? It's a lot of people's idea. I'm not the only person that thinks like that. Um, so over the years, we've seen a lot of different you know, classic slip joints, they'll use modern uh, materials like upgraded steels, carbon fiber, that was a huge thing. The first time I saw carbon fiber on like a trapper, I'm like, wow, it's awesome that you're bringing this new stuff that, you know, people getting into the knife industry now really enjoy and know, but you're combining it with the old, you know, the classic. So I love the idea of that. But when I first saw a flipper design, I knew I wanted to incorporate that into this knife. All right, so what we have here is a Barlow design. Okay, that's the overall pattern here with a large stainless steel bolster. These are sculpted uh, G10 scales, by the way. All right, I like this pattern. It does facilitate a lot of grip. It's kind of classy looking. Kind of reminds me of like a buffalo horn. A lot of times traditional knives have this, you know, buffalo horn scales have this kind of cut out for some reason. But if I hit the light just right, you can still see it's a layer G10. So you can see these kind of swoop marks that are in there. It's on both sides, it's on both knives, it's the same, you know, scales. So you have that layer G10, of course it's black, but you also have these striations in here for grip. It does facilitate grip. But anyway, going back to the design, I wanted to have a flipper in a classic knife design, okay? Loved the idea. And you can see there's a liner lock, traditional style liner lock, not like the reverse liner like you have in some Victorinox knives and such. But uh, I really wanted to incorporate that. And as the years passed, I've seen a couple people come out with, you know, flipper 
knives in traditional patterns, mostly customs. Okay, I, I saw it a lot in the custom world, not a lot, but I saw it enough where it wasn't really an original idea anymore. And so what I wanted to do was kind of incorporate a second blade, which obviously you could say this is two blades. I kind of tease everyone with pictures like this on Instagram. People are like, whoa, that's way too fat. What's going on there? Well, two blades. So here's a close up so you can see the fit and finish on this. All right, I'm very, very happy with how these came out. Amazing fit and finish, especially for the price point. But there's a blade centering on those. All right, you can see the scales, spacers. Just really came out nice. Also, I'll give you some specs. I don't think I talked about that yet. 3.2 inches in the closed position. All right, the main blade is 2.5 inches long. I've actually compared this to the, uh, the secondary blade. So I can keep them open at the same time. You see the secondary blade or slip joint blade is just a hair longer. All right, maybe a tenth of an inch or something. But uh, I did choose to do um, two different blade styles. The main blade, the flipper blade, I want it to be super slender and just a needle point. All right, so all that fine cutting work can be done with this very easily. There is a swedge on top. All right, secondary blade. Again, there's a nail nick on the side there. You can see not quite as pointy. So if you have uh, more delicate work, you'll use the first blade or the main blade. If you don't want to damage that tip, you can always pop out the second blade. Also a swedge on the top here. Um, the open position, regardless of either blade, is uh, 5.8 inches. And the weight is only 3.7 ounces. Now, although it's less than four ounces, it kind of feels a little bit chunky just because it's short and wide. You know what I mean? And we have a stainless frame here, so it's just, it's kind of compact. So it feels a little bit heavier because it's not spread out. The same, you know, 3.7 ounces on like a four inch bladed knife would feel a little bit lighter. All right, so it feels like it has some heft. Um, might be considered heavy to some people, but to me it just feels solid. And for some reason, solid sometimes feels like it's better constructed, although it has nothing to do with that. But uh, overall feels very nice. Um, one major thing, which is a huge decision, if you noticed already, there's no pocket clip, okay? Because there's no pocket clip, I definitely want to have a lanyard hole, which you can see on the bottom here. But the reason I chose not to have a pocket clip is kind of twofold. Uh, the major reason is just by design. I don't think a clip would look good if it was landing on the bolster. And if it was too short like this, it might be too stiff and hard to use, especially with the texturing on the G10 scales. Um, the other reason, the less practical reason, is just because it's more traditional that's been modernized, I didn't want a pot clip on this. All right, so I know it's going to be a bummer for some people who like it clipped, but I think it was, it was too short and wide for the clip, and like I said, by design, I didn't think it would look good. So obviously, I like the design. That's a no-brainer, right? Um, but getting one in hand and actually using it, I just really fell in love with the little slender blade here. Just such an amazing little point pierces like nobody's business. This has come super sharp, both of them. Um, I did notice that the 5CR15 MOV, as expected, got dull fairly quickly with heavy cardboard cutting, uh, but I did also notice that it's stropped up very quickly and very nicely. I don't think I've ever really stropped softer steels like that because I have no problem dulling them out and sharpening them. Uh, I tend to strop, you know, some of the higher end stuff. But it's dropped up super, super simple. So I highly recommend not just this knife. I mean, across the board, if you're using a cheaper, softer steel, I would very much you know, recommend investing in a decent strop and some stropping compounds and just learning how to do that. It's a really simple process. It's an easy way to maintain an edge without having to actually sharpen your blades. Um, as far as the downsides, there's two downsides to this and it just has to do with unlocking and opening, all right? When I first got this design and sent it to them, they sent me a prototype, which I have here. And if you notice, the blades are in the opposite position. So the first prototype, the main blade was on the back. Now the problem with this, having a traditional liner lock, is that I went to unlock this for the very first time and like literally slapped my forehead and went, that's too hard to do. It's very hard to do one-handed. Obviously you could do it, but this blade the back of here gets in the way. So again, another reason why I'm very happy with bashing gear is it would have been very easy to just start making these, but I told them I'm like, no, this is a no-go. Like you can't have it like this. We got to swap the blades. And they said, all right, no problem. We'll take care of it. And that's what they did. So the flipper is awesome. Using the liner lock, you can see now the blade is on the opposite side of it. 
So when you're using the liner lock, you just have to make sure you're up towards the top part here. It's very easy to unlock that, but if you come down too low, like down here, you end up putting pressure on this blade as opposed to the liner lock. All right, so it's not really a problem so much as it is something to get used to. Um, with regular knives, if you're used to just grabbing it down low, it's not going to work. You're going to be pushing on this blade and not the lock, but if you come up high, it's no problem. You just get the tip of your thumb in there. It's very easy to, you know, disengage that lock. The only other issue that I had was with the secondary blade, that nail nick is kind of high. Now, the closer the nail nick will be to the pivot, the harder it's going to be to open. If the nail nick was way down here, it'd be very easy to open as opposed to if it was way up here, it'd be like almost impossible. Uh, the location was simply because of the blade design. I really wanted to have a swedge, which did not allow that nail nick to be down here, where it would probably be better. And you could see that the blade is covering it just a little bit, this first blade. So the only real negative here is using the nail. Obviously, if you don't have, I mean, my nails are cut, um, but if you have like super, super short nails, it might be a little bit harder to get to that. A uh, simple solution would be opening the first blade, and then obviously it's totally exposed. But in doing that, you do run the risk of cutting yourself with the exposed blade while you're opening the second one. Not a huge deal, but definitely a critique. So when using this, go high on the liner lock. It's not really an issue at all. I'm so used to using it. I mean, even after a week, it's not a big deal to open and close that secondary blade. But at first, it might seem like it's a little bit difficult to get to. So, I mean, that's my only real critique with this. Um, I love it. I mean, I kind of thought I would. But actually getting it and using it, it, it's just awesome. Absolutely love it. Also, because of the flipper, I want a three-quarter open design. I don't know if I mentioned that before. Uh, mostly because of the liner lock. If this was an enclosed back completely, dust and dirt and stuff would get in there. It might keep that liner from opening, you know, all the way. And locking up that blade so having the three-quarter open back should be enough to you know you can physically blow through there you don't need like canned air or anything but just to keep the dust and dirt and stuff out so you have a functional lock but i am super super excited about these i think they came out great i love them if you guys are interested in getting them i'll put links down in the description box for both again the cheaper version with the 5 cr 15 mov is going to be 39.99 and the more expensive upgraded steel is going to be $99.99. So as far as availability, there are only 300 of the cheaper $40 versions that were made. And there's only 100 of the S35VN versions. So if you guys are interested in this, get them while you can. I'll keep you updated as to what stock's left and, you know, the interest and such. If everything goes well, perhaps I could do more knife designs with them in the future. Um, again, I'm very, very happy how this project came out. I love the knife. It's a cool, classy option. If you guys are into your, you know, big frame lock, you know, folders clipped to your pocket, obviously not the one for you, but it's a cool way for me to, you know, fuse the old and the new together. So let me know what you guys think down below. I promise you won't hurt my feelings. It's just a knife design. Uh, not every knife is for every person, but I'm, I'm sure a lot of people will enjoy these. I definitely have been enjoying mine. Obviously, it's going to be a staple in the EDC for a long time. Um, but yeah, huge thank you to Bastion Gear for working with me and actually listening to me and you know doing everything that I wanted to see in this knife. I, I'm just very, very excited about it. So again, limited quantities. Get them while you can. Let me know down below what you think. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy the day. Hope you enjoy the knife if you get one. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care.